Thank you, Gregoris, for this uh, very kind introduction. I'm so happy to share with you this uh, important webinar and uh, congratulations for organizing such important meeting uh, and, and based on some numerous experiences. So let's talk now about our experience, as, as you know, Gregoris, regarding the uh, clinical and biological profiling of patients at risk for severe COVID-19. As you know, that SARS-CoV-2, uh, let's say, uh, infection is leading to a multifocal invasion regarding these numerous cell tropism. So it's for sure a massive and major inflammation with an important cytokine release uh, with serious cardiovascular consequences, as you heard yesterday. And uh, we, we know all together that, in fact, COVID-19 is not only a pneumonia, pneumonia, but it's also a vascular disease with uh, an intravascular storm uh, involving numerous, numerous cells uh, in the vascular compartment and numerous plasma proteins. And these are, of course, leading to a, a very important hypercoagulable state. So COVID-19 is a multidimensional disease and it's linked to, of course, the SARS-CoV-2 invasion, but also to the patient's patient characteristics, the patient comorbidities, and the, the inflammatory response so is of importance because it's inducing different pathological and hemostatic abnormalities, and of course, provoking uh, this uh, prothrombotic uh, disease with uh, sometimes venous thrombosis, but also pulmonary intravascular coagulopathy and, and nuclear infarction or disseminated intravascular coagulation. So now we must audit the patients, and uh, in fact, the prognosis is uh, related to the context, the severity of the COVID-19, uh, let's say, evolution, to the patient's, again, profile, and to the coagulopathy, again, and uh, is it enough? Because regarding uh, the work of some teams now, trying to establish a COVID-19 coagulopathy staging based on, of course, the uh, Lang affection and different, let's say, hemostatic parameters such as the dimers, platelet count, or the prolongation of PT or APTT. And you see that uh, the higher is the staging, greater should be the therapy intensification. But this is again a challenging, uh, let's say, issue. So in our compass COVID 19, a study, we uh, aim to uh, identify the most relevant clinical and hematological risk factors for worsening disease in COVID-19 patients which are hospitalized. And for that, we uh, base our work on a prospective observational cohort. You see that just between the 18th of March to the 5th of April, we uh, he, let's say included all the uh, COVID-19 confirmed patients with, uh, let's say, a profiling at day one of their admission. And we got a derivation cohort of more 310 patients divided in the so-called conventional world, the C group with two thirds of the patients and the ICU world uh, with the worsening group with one third of the patients. And the disease worsening criteria, you see that it was the acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, the respiratory insufficient symptoms, or the reduction of the arterial oxygen saturation, the existence of a shock or myocardial dysfunction, or any, let's say, co-infections with acute kidney injury. So these are our criteria. And we exclude women with pregnancy, the cancer with active chemotherapy and patient receiving already a curative anticoagulant treatment. And 
these are the clinical characteristics. And you see that comparing the conventional group to the worsening group, you observe that the gender, uh, male gender was more often in the worsening group and uh, the patients were older in this group and they got much more frequently cardiovascular risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and surprisingly, and it's not, again, it's, it's some, there is a, some, let's say, uh, discussion now in the literature. So the smokers were less, let's say, represented in the working group than in the commercial group. And regarding now the comorbidities, we observe mainly uh, chronic renal impairment or severe renal impairment in these patients. And the patients with cancer were not so numerous and they are not, let's say, more represented in the worsening group. And as you see, the coagulopathy evaluated through the DIC ISTS score, uh, which is well known, over five points, you see that already more than 8% of the patient in the conventional group got a uh, compensated DIC, but it's, of course, it's much more frequent, three, three times more in the worsening group. So the storm is there. Now, what about the hematological characteristics? And uh, here, okay, we observe the uh, DIC ICS score here with the uh, prolongation of PT, the increase of fibrinogen and D-dimers, most often in the worsening group compared to the conventional group with the reduced antithrombin or protein C, let's say levels. But regarding now the uh, blood cells, and you see that we got anemia more frequently in the worsening group with a reduction of uh, lymphocytes and of course an increase of the neutrophils and the, uh, the uh, monocytes. Regarding now, the uh, logistic regression univariate analysis. We observe that the more important risk factors related to the worsening group were male gender, the cardiovascular risk factors with obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and uh, regarding the comorbidities, the renal impairment, and regarding the coagulopathy, of course, uh, it's a score, DIC score over five, which are associated with important other ratios. Regarding now the pathological uh, profile, you see that we got the anemia, the, uh, let's say the, the reduction of platelets and the reduction of lymphocytes and the, of course, the, of eosinophils. But now, regarding now the multivariate analysis, we retain only five factors, gender, male gender, obesity, an increase ISTH score over five, anemia below 11, and of course, lymphopenia below 1,000. And these five, let's say, parameters helped us to build this compass COVID-19 risk assessment model. And we follow the rule of thumb, with the so-called event per variable, per variable uh, 10 to 1, because we choose to, let's say, keep less than 10 variables to keep the model easy to use. And this is the equation we, 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 let's say we built, and we developed this RAM in accordance with well-defined adherence scoring rules, you know, the, the tripod, let's say, uh, assessment. And doing that, here in our five items, Compass COVID-19 RAM, obesity, main gender, increased BIC score over five, with a reduction of lymphocytes and a reduction of anemia. And you see that if the score is over 18, because 
you, you have a score between zero and 54. So over 18, you are considered at high risk for, let's say, uh, disease aggravation. And if you are below 18, you are at low risk. So it's yes, no, it's a, a very easy, uh, let's say, certification. You are in, you're out, you're at high risk or at low risk. And regarding the qualitative characteristic of our RAM, you see that it's very well calibrated between worsening cases and non-worsening cases. And regarding again, the area under the curve is very comfortable and the sensitivity is 81% and negative frequency value is around 90%. So this score has a good accuracy to identify patients at risk and of course, for disease, let's say deterioration, and for maybe uh, requiring uh, an earlier and stronger management. So we uh, followed by a validation cohort based again uh, in our single center uh, recruitment. Uh, from you see here the only uh, two weeks with uh, 120 consecutive patients having COVID-19 confirmation and admitted to uh, the emergency room. And again, we got a two third in the conventional ward and one third in the ICU ward. And we observed exactly the same profile considering the male gender, the uh, older patients, the cardiovascular risk factors present in the worsening group more often than in the conventional group. And of course, the same comorbidities and the, uh, of course, the increase of compensated TIC. And here you see that it was again present in uh, quite limited number in the, the conventional group and much higher number regarding the, the worsening group. But here again, you see that this score was able to identify 90% in the worsening group and 38% in the conventional group with a very good sensitivity, 94% and a very high negative frequency value. So we confirm again, the quality of this run. And very recently, uh, another, uh, let's say clinical risk scoring was uh, published to predict the uh, clinical illness in COVID-19 hospitalized patients. It's a Chinese, uh, scoring, you see that they based their uh, analysis on the let's say, retrospective cohort from the National Health Commission of China, involving more than uh, let's say 575 hospitals. So it's a huge dimension. However, the the criteria were were a composite of uh, the ICU admission, invasive ventilation and the uh, uh, death. The division cohort was, let's say, only 1,590 patients, because you, you see this very limited number of patients per hospital. I remember that it's 575 hospitals. And a very, very, uh, let's say, small group uh, for the critical illness. It's a group, 131 representing only 8% of their uh, cohort. The vaccine cohort uh, was done also based on four hospitals, again, limited numbers, uh, despite one month, let's say, recruitment. However, you see here the patient characteristics in their division cohort. You see that they were, of course, older, that is, uh, uh, as you observe. But regarding the fever, they were not, let's say, in a, uh, let's say more uh, severe situation than the non-critical illness group. Regarding the blood pressure, it was slightly increased in the uh, critical illness group, but you see here the diastolic numbers are quite surprising here with the standard deviation. Anyway, they got more male in the uh, severe uh, critical illness and you see here that uh, regarding the uh, uh, smokers, they, they were more frequent in the critical illness group here. And regarding the comorbidities, of course, the patient got more 
numerous comorbidities in the critical illness group. But regarding again here, the, the, the type of comorbidities to observe the cardiovascular uh, risk factors here, of course, and the malignancy was also more represented in the critical illness group. And regarding uh, the, uh, oh, excuse me, and, and regarding again, the, uh, um, regarding uh, now the multivariate logistic analysis, you see that they uh, retain uh, the X-ray abnormalities, the age, hemoptysis, dyspnea, and consciousness, the number of comorbidities, cancer history, the ratio of neutrophiles to lymphocytes, and the lactate disoverginase and the, the bilirubin levels. But it was surprising that hemoptysis, uh, in consciousness, and cancer history got the highest odor ratio, but regarding the others, odor ratio are not so let's say, impressive, despite being statistically significant. Doing that, they got a very elegant array under the curve, but it just de determining a probability for critical ill events in this COVID-19 patient. And you see that uh, the higher is the, the score and the highest is the probability for being critically ill. And they propose a web calculator, but there is no information regarding the sensitivity, the specificity, and the other the quality of characteristic of this scoring system. And uh, based on the validation cohort, you see that, uh, in fact, it's not uh, 710, it's uh, 729 patients. But however, they observe the same, the same profile as they observed in their derivation cohort. And uh, regarding now the malignant disease, in fact, cancer is not so represented now in the validation cohort than they observed in the derivation cohort. And regarding the comorbidities, there are less cardiovascular risk factors in this cohort. So there are some surprises again. In conclusion, our COMPASS COVID-19 RAM is accurate and really accessible to all, all facilities because it's uh, uh, just requiring a routine non-specialized hematological laboratory. He got a very good discriminating capacity to stratify patients at high or at low risk of disease aggravation. It's of course original, simple, easy to use, and we identify really early patients requiring uh, let's say, an optimized target of management. We, of course, respect all the triple guidelines and we now, uh, let's say, uh, trying to validate in an external manner our uh, RAM and it's already ongoing with the uh, multinational approach and, and collaboration. And this RAM, it's, of course, offering, let's say, a tool for the challenging issue to get an earlier and adapted treatment, and of course, to let's say, uh, try to lead to a more positive clinical outcome in this COVID-19 severe patient. Thank you for your attention.